game of, I don't know how to watch this. So CBS's Supergirl has debuted, and it's gotten actually overwhelmingly positive critical responses. But I have noticed in the fandom that even early on when we were getting the early trailers, there was a very split response to it. Um, there was a lot of people that likened it and honestly, rightfully so, to the Black Widow Saturday. I disagree, it's not rightfully so. So close. <laughs> that. that trailer was so close to that sketch. No. <laughs> but disagree. To what? Disagree. The Saturday Night Live Black Widow sketch. And a lot of people were saying, oh, it's like a rom com. This, hang on, I want you to rant. I want you to get angry. But um, <laughs> I, I, I propose this that literally as as audience members and critics we don't know how to watch this because it is a superhero show that is specifically aimed not only at women but young girls it doesn't exist elsewhere and so there's no litmus test and we we get very confused secret world of alex mack secret world of who alex mack she was kind of a superhero and that was for young girls sorry go on yeah that's 20 years ago though but yeah, it was great I mean, and it wasn't girl. based on a pre-existing property, property that has ties to superman and yeah, that so is the problem. that's where it gets confusing I, so because i like there was a supergirl film and i will say if i was 11 12 years old i would be all over this show i would be loving it and i'm still enjoying it but i have a mixed response and i i i wonder what you think clark because i know you cover this show yeah so i am part of the um collider video after show that we talk about supergirl every week after each episode and um so the reason first of all i want to say the reason i take issue with the idea of black widow the movie is um because in the supergirl extended look that came out that the trailer caused all that controversy supergirl lands a effing plane and saves the she smashes an effing truck and explodes the stuff she fights she she so you know for me the reason that um, that I wasn't so taken aback by the trailer was because you know guess what when I was 22 I was just like that I didn't know what landing I was doing planes? no I wish I was landing planes <laughs> but in terms of Amazing. ordering lattes for bosses and going on awkward first internet dates and stumbling around and I didn't know who I was and so I really take issue with the idea that it's wrong to show Supergirl in that light, especially when those action sequences are in the exact same trailer. I don't think it's wrong to show her in that light necessarily. I just thought the timing was a little unfortunate. Well, you know, look, yeah, the Black Widow, the 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 movie trailer was was spot on and it was funny and I don't, I mean, I enjoyed it very much, but I just think that there was much more to the first look of Supergirl than just that. And writing it off in that way is an easy, is an easy shot to take when I think that, you know, I cried the first time I saw the Supergirl trailer because and look I want to be very clear I, I it's not that I'm not aware that I am a Caucasian girl from the suburbs in the United States and looking at another Caucasian girl you know r being the superhero it, it's slightly progressive if that there are plenty of people of color and different backgrounds who are not represented in the superhero space and we need to fix that we do but on the very base level seeing a girl do those things as a lifelong fan of superhero content and movies and TV and all of these things, I cried. I'd never seen anything like that before. So for me, it it's not one of those things that is as polarizing. Now, granted, we've seen two episodes, the third episode is coming, and to answer your overall question, I do agree. People don't know how to watch this show. This show, spoiler alert, is not made for boys who love comic books. Right. This is made for girls who don't read comic books yet. I, I mean, I think it's made for girls that don't read comic books yet, but it's also made for girls that do, you oh, know? Yeah, totally, totally. But I think that their main audience is... I think girls who may not have experience with the superhero genre. I mean, so as a general question, do you think sure. that, sure. Sure, I'm ready. Throw I'm it ready at me. I throw it down, <laughs> I just think you're great, so I'm ready for whatever you have. <laughs> um, do you think that in general, we talked about this a, a little bit the other week, that often we don't know how to watch content that is specifically aimed towards women. You know, I mean, this is something that's aimed tor towards girls that doesn't doesn't isn't usually aimed towards girls. It's superheroes. Yeah. Right. But in general, you know, Meryl Streep brought up and we've talked about here uh, that on Rotten Tomatoes, it's, I think, 760 male critics. It's 160 female wow. critics. And so does that skew the perspective of how we judge media? Um, 
I feel like I'm half boy at this point. Yeah. Like, no, I honestly do. Like, I feel like I do not know how to watch that show. It's it's also that I have a penis, but go ahead. That that will throw it. That's uh, but it's just like Speaking a technicality. Of balls. Yeah. <laughs> I, my references are really old because I'm going like, well, Secret World of Alex Mack or like Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like she was a superhero. She yeah. was kind of a superhero. She was normal, but she she kicked ass and. Yeah. I feel like men, boys, got on board with that show probably just as much as girls. They, maybe, maybe not. They did, but the thing about Buffy, and I actually am a huge Buffy fan. Yeah, um, that's what made me like want to come to LA and do stuff. Like kill vampires, me too. Yeah. Well, yeah. what you realize that you can't actually have like a career killing vampires, but you could like acting and writing and stuff. And yeah, like, that seems like the next best. I mean, you don't get paid to kill vampires. You do it for love, I yeah. tell. <laughs> anyway, I, but the thing with Buffy is that what Buffy did that Supergirl is not doing is that it subverted the tropes. It took a girl that was a blonde cheerleader who was initially, especially in the movie, which Joss Whedon wasn't happy with, a little bit ditzy. Right. And then it challenged <clears throat> her to rise up and become a hero. And it took sort of those tropes and it subverted them. Supergirl, what it's doing very differently, is playing right into the very female tropes. It's playing That's into them. And it. at No, it's not my... Oh. I don't have an issue with it. I'm just noting that it's playing into those tropes and adding the element that she is also a superhero what I like about that is this is that I think the messages previously hang on before you yell at me woman I love the controversy today though this is Is exciting previously I think the message had been you can be awesome as a girl if you don't act like a girl right and this message is you can be awesome as a girl acting just like most women do because you're right when I was 22 I actually had a very different life than you. It was kind of a nightmare. I know I have a question. <laughs> right? Well, What's just you question? said, just like most women do, and I'm not sure what that means, right? Because like, right, is it that she's like traditionally girly and gets like mani pedis? Like, I don't know. I don't have a frame of reference. So what? It, what about it? Is a girl acting like a girl versus? Yeah, I think it's what you're saying, and I think it's that she is a young woman who is very early on in her career, is unsure of herself, is a little insecure. God. I'm that, is that what being a woman is? What am I saying? Clark, help me. Yeah, well, there is there is a whole thing about like how women will, there's like a TED talk about it. Women will think that they're less qualified and have more insecurities, even if they're actually better, which is a product of training, most likely, because we're not supposed to be good at things. We're supposed to be like supportive and polite and nice. And thankfully, we're getting away from that. Thank God. But it sounds like Supergirl is maybe feeding into a lot of those ideas. I think that Kara is, the, one of the main themes in the show is that Kara is in the shadow of her cousin, mm-hmm. who she was actually sent to protect. She's older than Kal-El. And we addressed this in episode two last week. Kal-El was a baby when he left Krypton, whereas Kara was eight. Yeah. So Kara knows how this Kryptonian society functions. And But because her pod got off track when she went to Earth, when she arrived, Kal-El was like 25. He was a grown-up. He was already Superman. So her coming out party was, in a lot of ways, um, overshadowed by by her male cousin, who is Superman, who everybody already knows and admires. So yeah. in a lot of ways, I actually think that's a really wonderful thing to dive into and explore because in so many ways girls who are entering into school or clubs or activities or the workforce they often are overshadowed by those male counterparts um but what i wanted to say about buffy if i may play devil's advocate because i am a huge buffy fan myself the first three seasons of that show were about her being crazy in love with Angel. Angel and losing her virginity and struggle and she was all hung up on a boy. But she didn't seem to lose sight of her mission. And it yeah. wasn't didn't take but center stage. It was I, compelling. It's I, exciting to watch a love story. I would argue that the first couple of seasons of and by the way, I love Joss Whedon and I am a huge admirer of his in terms of women and in terms and in terms of that show. Yeah. But I just don't want to put on the rose colored glasses for the beginnings of Buffy in that in saying that it didn't fall into all those high school tropes too. And I'm going to Mistopheles right back at you okay. and say mm-hmm. this, that one of the things that we're saying that we like about Supergirl, if we like it, is that it is not hiding from, from those right. experiences that are very normal for not just a young woman, but a young man too, to have, right? So when you are 16, you fall in love. You may have sex. You may lose your virginity. These are things that will happen to a teenager. If you are doing it in the midst of an apocalypse, sips, sips, sips. Why can't I say words? 
Why can't I say words? Apocalypse, so freaking be it, right? Like sure. that just adds flavor. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with the way Buffy handled Although it. Although there was a big age discrepancy that was a little, a little creepy, a little, little <laughs> yeah. statutory. Oh. Um, but, but regardless, all I'm saying is, I just don't think that it's. F- I think that we're we're maybe giving the first couple of seasons of Buffy before Joss started killing everybody and you sure, know getting sure. uber dark. Um, you know, we're maybe giving that a little more um, massaging than than we're willing to give Supergirl at this point. Well, also, we've, it's what, how many years ago is that? Like, yeah. we should yeah. be further along than we were then. Sure. And he sort of paved the way. So everybody that's making content now has the benefit of what Joss Whedon's already done and cleared for us. I think, I think it's justified that we maybe give him a little more credit. And then we have the, we have the, we have the perspective of the whole. We have hindsight vision. Yeah. What I've discovered in this segment is that I have no answers and none of us do. I am only left with questions, people, <laughs> about my own sense of womanhood, well, media, I super girl. how you I watch me. things. I will say this, though. I will say, genuinely speaking, I prefer Daredevil, which is unabashedly a very masculine masculine show, and I prefer it. I just I think it's a better show. Top. But um, but that's a whole debate for next time I have you on. We can go toe-to-toe. We'll talk about being made for not the same audience. Daredevil was not made for little girls. I just want to come back to that I point of to differ. Uh, <laughs> girls that act like dudes, because I think that is part of the issue. That that the idea is that unless a woman is like falling over, tripping over her feet because she's so in love with a boy, or like doing more girly things like cheerleading or whatever, like if she's just kicking ass, then it's like, well, it's a girl who acts like a boy. But I think that's the issue. Is like, no, that's just a person. That's just a person acting like they act. You're right. Yeah. I feel very schooled right now. <laughs> I think we've all learned an important lesson today about my own inability <laughs> to remove my preconceived mo- notions um and roth hates women i think is what we've learned i yeah. think we've learned that why I hate are you women. such a misogynist roth yeah, i think that Get we've learned together. that i hate women no i apologize she's a real champion world. of women i can speak from personal I, I experience i second that <laughs> for breaking entertainment news and more follow at hitfix on twitter or visit hitfix.com